Hello, and welcome to My Media Museum. My name is Will, and today we're going to be looking at some odd little things. Um, I went to an estate cell, and I guess the uh, lady that had lived there had been a DJ, so she had a number of unique, interesting items. But as I was walking up to go in, they had a box of free stuff there, and I noticed a stack of 45s in it. So I grabbed those, went and put them in the car before I even went on into the sale. Um, you know, free 45s. The very first one on top was a Who one, which we'll get to in just a minute. And I'll show you that one. That's what made me say, oh, score. Well, the rest of the stack's not so impressive. But it has some really interesting things in it, uh, as well as a lot of broken and, and you know, damaged 45. So, anyways, this one here is an interesting one. Budweiser, the king of beers. Uh, sampler of the 1958 radio commercials. Now, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, whether you're a beer collector um, of Budweiser things or just, you know, a lover of music or his radio history, that's really cool something to have. Um, it's got two different sides. Um, I believe they're uh, different. Um, so, yeah, really cool to hear commercials from 1958 advertising Budweiser. And, and that was free. I couldn't believe that. They just, just gave me that. Uh, it's got um, eight different commercials on there. So, pretty nifty. And then the next up, me and my Winstons. <laughs> Not for commercial broadcasts or other unauthorized uses. Um, I listened to this, or uh, part of it, just a few moments ago because the B-side is really something to see. The B-side is really super cool, and I wanted to see if it had any content. But getting back to the point, um, this is a sales pitch, trying to get stores to um, carry Winston's and telling them how Winston's going to be doing this big marketing campaign and all this stuff. This isn't something that would have been played on the radio. This was something that probably was shipped to stores with some other cigarette sales or something. I don't know. Um, but it's really weird. It's kind of like somebody making a sales pitch on a 33 and a third 7 inch. But what really caught my eye was look at the B side. The B side is blank. It's completely blank. But it's got a really nifty pattern like a checkerboard racing pattern uh, etched into it. And I thought, well, what's that sound like? I had to put it on to see if there was any content. Well, there's not. There's no no sound whatsoever to be uh, had on this B-side. Um, but, wow, really cool. Visually visually neat. Uh, and and just something free for picking it up. Uh, I, was, I was thrilled to death. Then this one here, you know, this is just an example of, um, you used to get these little plastic vinyls they used to come i even had one out of a mad magazine one time and um there was one i remember a friend of mine had that came out of a penthouse or hustler that was dirty <laughs> um but the magazines would do these and you know you can they make a really cool sound when you wobble them um, but this was time life records and uh, where this actually came from who knows demonstration record and these will play. This one's got a really nasty wrinkle in it. That's, but if it wasn't for that, it would be in really great shape. Uh, I have a number of these that are kids' records that probably came out of kids' books and stuff. And um, maybe in, sometime in the future I will film some of those children's 45s too to put up, maybe spark a few memories for people. Um, but this one, Brenda Lee's rocking around the Christmas tree, have a happy holiday. That was that's a really great one, right? You think why would they have that in a free box? Well, it's warped, really, really bad. <laughs> Besides Papa Noel, but I mean, I don't think I could get any. Uh, it might, it might, but I don't think I would even try because it's probably going to slide off. Um, yeah. That one's just warped beyond belief. And then the next one up here, this uh, Gale Storm, Love by the Jukebox Light. That sounded like a cool title, but uh, you notice something? <coughs> <laughs> Looks like somebody took a bite out of it. Huge, huge chunk missing. So, yeah, you could listen to the last little bit of it safely if you really wanted to just hear the last few notes of it. Uh, same with the B-side. 
on my mind again, same thing. Um, you might be able to listen to, you know, 30 seconds of it, but uh, that's about all she's going to be worth. Um, so that's that's kind of sad. And this one, um, this one is a really cool label. I like that Aladdin, Beverly Hills, California. Uh, Little Bitty Pretty One by Thurston Harris. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of cool. And a B-side being a song called... I hope you won't hold it against me. Um, but yeah, that, the first one kind of seems to ring a little bit of a bell, but you also notice something? You're not going to be able to listen to the whole song. Not only is it got a bite taken out of it, it's got a crack running through it that I would not want to subject my needle to. Some cracks, you know, are really smooth. This one's not horrifying, but I wouldn't do that to my needle, and I wouldn't recommend you do it to yours. Uh, I have a few 45s that have hairline cracks in them that I will play. Um, I kiss one in particular that I recall. But for the most part, it's not worth the damage to your needle. And here's a Ricky Nelson one, A Teenager's Romance. And when I got inside, there were a whole ton of Ricky Nelson uh, 45s they were wanting $5 a pop for. Uh, picture sleeves, no less. The cardboard ones, not the flimsy little paper ones, but the, the heavy-duty cardboard ones, you know, that they'd make in the late 50s, early 60s. Um, so you kind of wonder, well, why in the heck would they have a Ricky Nelson out in the free pile? It couldn't be just because of that sticker, right? Especially since the B-side is, I'm walking, yes, indeed, I'm talking old Fast Domino song. And if you're a fan of the channel, you know I'm a big fan of Fast Domino. I, I don't know why, but I have quite a, an appreciation for Fats Domino. I loved his stuff. And um, so this would have been a real special score uh, had it not been for this. <laughs> that is a warp you're not going to be able to get around. Now, you could listen to about three quarters of it. I could put it on. I could definitely uh, get the needle to track at least half of that song, if not better. But there's no way you're getting over that. That's... That's insurmountable for any any turntable. So, um, next up we had Paul Davis, 65 Love Affair. Yeah, you know, that would have been a nice one to have, kind of a score. Um, but uh, he's not just cracked once, he's cracked twice. Got a really bad crack there, and then he's got another bad crack over here. Not to mention a heck of a scratch. So, one tremendous cavern deep scratch and two huge cracks um no and i have a copy of this one anyway so like i said i didn't look through the stack it was a free box i seen a stack of 45s i seen the who on top of that stack of 45s and uh i snagged and ran with it it was like oh yeah um so and then i went back into selling i bought some so i i spent like 30 bucks there buying 45s off of the off of them so you know, not no big deal me getting a stack, especially when the bulk of them are trash. <clears throat> but I want to share them with you anyways. I want to show you what I got and some couple of unique labels, some interesting titles. And here's the one that was on the top of the stack. This is the one that I looked down and I said, ooh, score. Now, I did notice this, this scuffing here. I thought it was just dirty, but it's actually not. It's actually scuffed up. I mean, you can feel it. I don't know what in the heck almost like they laid it on a, on a on something that was hot and it kind of melted into it so unfortunately it's even a track records which is the european you know label that distributed who albums in in europe um 1972 the relay you know good song but you're not going to listen to it off of this copy um but the b-side you could the b-side looks perfectly fine the album itself is not warped um, the album, the, the single itself is not warped. But the song called Wasp Woman by Keith Moon. Um, yeah, that sounds interesting. Uh, and I will definitely be throwing that on at some point and give it a listen. Because even though, you know, this side looks perfect. This side looks great. Even though this side is messed up and you can feel it, um, it doesn't actually warp the disc. If I could show it to you on end, you'd see that, you know, it's perfectly straight. It's fine. Um, so... That's a one-sided single, uh, in my opinion, at this point. Uh, then next up, I don't know this one, um, Sonny Stitt, I guess you're going to pronounce it. 
um, Lover Man, you know, now I know a Jimi Hendrix song, Here Comes Your Lover Man, um, great Hendrix song, but uh, I don't think that's what this one is, uh, and this is clearly side two, so that's the B side, um, but Prestige Records, that's another logo, that's another um, distributor that I don't think I've came across before, um, so that's kind of cool, uh, out of New Jersey. Uh, the A side was a song called Candy. Now, maybe some of you out there know Sonny Stitt's Candy, because um, that is the side one, clearly marked side one, so that'd be the A side. And I don't see anything wrong with this disc. I don't see anything other than it's a little bit dirty. Um, but it could be cleaned up, and it could play just fine. There's no cracks, no warps, no problems. So I don't really know why they had that in the throwaway pile. Um, this one here... Um, it's clearly filthy. Um, looks like somebody splashed something all over it. Didn't bother cleaning it up. Um, maybe you can see that a little better there. Yeah, see? See, it's clearly filthy. But I don't believe the grooves are damaged. So I think this is one I could take some soap and water and a brush. I could clean that up if I wanted to. Um, probably will give it a shot. October 27, 1961 or 67. Kind of hard to tell there if that's a 1 or a 7 on the Swan label and Cody Benin and the Temptations Am I the Only One? Hmm, interesting. I don't know if that's the Temptations that you know of um, or something different. I've never heard the name Cody Brennan and I didn't take time to look it up online and see whether or not do some research to see if he's associated with the Temptations that I'm familiar with. Um, but like I said this is one that could probably be cleaned up and could probably be played. So, um, got a, another about another video's worth of these to look through. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off in the next video. The, ne the rest of them are all playable. There's no more damaged ones. I got rid of all the, the cracked and damaged ones at the start of that video there. So, hope you uh, have enough interest to come back and spend some more time with me. And we'll look through the rest of this free stack that I got. Have a great day.